today again I will continue with uh, sheet pile wall and uh, I have discussed uh, different types of sheet pile wall and uh, I have discussed also uh, mainly uh, cantilever sheet pile wall and cantilever sheet pile wall again uh, can be of different combination of soil uh, above dredge level, uh, below dredge level both are actually sand then that is one case. Above dredge, dredge level if it is sand and below dredge level if it is clay there is another combination and if both are clay then another combination. So, all those out of those all three cases I have discussed mainly uh, the first case actually that means, the sheet pile driven through sand and also retained sand. And uh, just uh, we have uh, tried to show how to find out the um, depth of embedment required and uh, to provide a particular uh, factor of safety. And uh, finally, uh, I have taken without water table and most of the time uh, it will be uh, there will be water table uh, because it is most of the time sheet pile wall will be the waterfront structure and uh, either river bank or there will be jetty or there will be wabs. So, everywhere it is uh, uh, water table will be there and we have uh, what I have considered without water table and if there is water table what will be the changes uh, that also I have mentioned that uh, we are for finding out the pressure diagram we are uh, doing what I were doing gamma times depth times earth pressure coefficient. So, if the water table is there, so below water table instead of gamma you have to use gamma submerge rest of the things are same. So, that is the thing we I have already discussed also I have shown with the help of properly on a application uh, on a numerical example the application of it how to uh, do it. And next part uh, uh, of course, uh, I could have done uh, other two cases like uh, sand co cohesive and cohesive cohesive, but uh, I am not doing that because it is too much for uh, perhaps in undergraduate level. So, I am not doing that and uh, next uh, part I will do um, that is cantilever retaining wall cantilever sheet pile wall not retaining wall cantilever sheet pile wall. And uh, a brief introduction I have given in the last lecture, but uh, today I will try to uh, show some more detail that actually the what is uh, 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 cantilever uh, sorry, sorry uh, anchored sheet pile wall not cantilever, cantilever already we have done anchored sheet pile wall which is also known as uh, bulkhead anchored bulkhead. Uh, our type of retaining wall uh, are found in waterfront construction mostly and which is used as a verbs or pier for loading and unloading sieve or barges. And how it constructed actually generally uh, this construction of this type of wall first it will be penetrate and uh, to a desired depth and then from the top uh, it will be connected to a tie and it will be uh, connected to finally, to a, uh, uh, a dead weight or wall or somewhere, where actually uh, and that will be uh, far away from the uh, potential uh, uh, slip uh, plane. So, I can show you here uh, that uh, you can see here, uh, this is the cantilever sheet pile wall and this is actually mostly uh, filled up material soft and this is actually original uh, um, uh, ground. So, here actually this anchor is connected to a dead weight, the dead weight is kept actually in the original ground not in this. So, if you keep this one then it may pull entire thing and fall and so because of that this is it should be uh, away uh, from uh, safely away from the, uh, the potential slip, uh, slip plane. So, similarly here actually you can see this is also anchor is connected to some wall actually uh, and this you can see this is also kept in the original ground not in this uh, ground and actually this idea of this, this this area has to be accessed. So, because of this this vertical wall will be made and then this will be filled up and then this area will be used for whatever uh, service required. And similarly when this is kept you can see here 
the actual is load taken by these two piles actually batter pile. So, because of that instead of coming here it can be kept here or anywhere, but uh, this portion this connection is within the uh, uh, soft zone or loose zone or filled up zone, but actual support is there actually on the original ground. So, because of that that is also another mechanism by which we can do anchoring. Okay. Next part is actually that anchor bulkhead and if you see uh, typically uh, uh, if it is a uh, uh, penetration is very deep and it can be deep and it can be shallow when the penetration is shallow then a typically anchor bulkhead that deflection shape will be like this uh, it is shown here actually deflected shape will be like that and this portion will be keeping like almost like a simply support. Okay. So, uh, and you can see and because of that uh, this is called at this point actually there is no fixity. So, because of that this point as if it is simply supported and it is just holding like simply support. So, because of that this one is called free art support you can see that seat piles have been driven to shallow depth the deflection of bulkhead is somewhat similar to that of vertical elastic beam whose lower end is simply supported and the other end is fixed as shown this this, this look, looks like fixed and this like is simply supported. And so, because of that uh, uh, the, the condition is called actually bulkhead with free art support. So, this is the one actually another is there actually fixed art support and mostly we will discuss this one because again that is little uh, uh, more uh, rigorous. So, we will not discuss that for uh, this level and so, we will discuss this, but what is actually uh, fixed art support that I will just try to show uh, in the uh, uh, of course, diagram is not there I will try to sketch. Uh, uh, so, le let it be uh, let, le let me continue this one. So, when this is a free art support is there uh, suppose this is the wall actually this is the wall and then what will be the pressure uh, actually in the behind the wall and in front of the wall and you can see that typically the bending of the uh, bending of the uh, of the earth was something like this is it not. So, it was like this. So, because of that you can ultimately it will be 0 here. So, uh, so you can see here that active earth pressure will be this side okay. and if it is continued assume that totally active then it can go this way and if you consider that uh, uh, simply passive then this diagram could have been this way. But the diagram will not be actually show because of this bending and it will be 0 pressure somewhere. So, active pressure and then because of passive pressure it will become somewhere 0 and then it will become passive net passive here. So, ultimately so that means for anchor bulkhead under free art support the typical pressure diagram will be this side up to some depth below up to some depth of dredge level it will be active and from that point to beyond up to the bottom that will be passive. Now, this for the equilibrium actually so this minus this must be equal to this that is the only thing to be considered. So, two things you have to do consider the equilibrium you have to find out what is the depth required for particular height of wall and second thing we have to find out what is the uh, 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 force in the tie rod these two things to be and then finally, you have to find out uh, bending moment also to find out the thickness and all that is also there, but initially two important things one is depth because seats are sometimes available in particular thickness. So, we can choose it, but what how much depth to be given and how much rod uh, what size of the rod anchoring is required this to design. So, you have to find out that and for that uh, you have to take this is the effective pressure diagram actually rest of the things actually for, for understanding these are all for understanding, but ultimately you have to take this portion of the diagram and this portion of the diagram and then you have to take this anchor force. These three components uh, you have to uh, consider the equilibrium and then based on that we will get this d unknown d and we can find out unknown uh, force in the rod. So, this will be uh, I will show in the uh, uh, subsequently uh, later stage. Uh, but next, next uh, let me show uh, if it is uh, uh, what is fixed art support. 
see that is the fixer support this is if the seat piles are driven to a considerable depth the lower end of the bulkhead is particularly fixed position because so that is that is what if you have we have got uh, something like that dress line and this is the one and we, we but typically the fixer support diagram will be something like this uh, uh, and like this instead of becoming 0 here it will be diagram will be something like so somewhere at this point at this point and beyond this because of this pressure at this side it will give you some fixity. Okay. So, but instead of bending like this, this bending will be like this now it will be like this it will be like this if it is depth like this. So, I have not if you see any book we will get the typical diagram, but what is the difference I wanted to show here that is it will go here then it will become 0 somewhere then it will be passive and then again from passive to again uh, it will become active that means it will bend in the other direction. So, that is actually this portion almost like uh, giving you the fixity effect. So, because of that it is called fixed art support, but of course, uh, since lot of involvement is there in this analysis of course, the, uh, if, if the time permits we can do, but because of the limitation of the time I will not do this I will try to uh, discuss uh, in length. Uh, in free art support how to find out the depth of embedment, how to find out the uh, force in the uh, anchor, how to find out the bending moment those things I will discuss. Okay. So, let me go to the next slide and you can see here the same diagram I again I have uh, taken here uh, and as I have told you that uh, that your uh, uh, in a seat pile wall always there will be water table and water table will be both side will be same because see if there is water table here water table also will be expected almost same maybe little uh, difference maybe sometime, but most of the you can see water table will be here because this is a close to ground if you go deeper than your water table may be uh, 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 may be something like that it will go, but in the very close to this it will be immediately behind the wall water table will be the same height and it can be uh, instead of here it can be anywhere also. So, we have taken some height actually water table at a depth suppose h 1 we have shown in this diagram and accordingly we have drawn the pressure diagram. So, this portion actually dry unit weight is taken. So, gamma dry multiplied by h 1 multiplied by k a this will be the p a bar p 1 bar and then if I go deeper then what you have to do I have to do that this part will be there and if I go deeper then what will be the increase. Uh, uh, so, below water table that means, this zone you have to use gamma b multiplied by h and multiplied by k a if I do and from here if I start with 0 and with the increase of k it will become this value. So, that means, if a p 1 at this point at this point p a bar p a bar will be equal to p 1 bar plus gamma b h k a uh, h instead of h I can say this is h 2 gamma b h 2 k. So, this p a bar to be calculated. So, this diagram is complete. Now, it will be uh, it will it will be it will be decreasing because of this passive pressure here. So, at some depth it will become 0 and then further increase of the depth at this point this this point, this value will be equal to gamma b k p minus k d naught or you can say gamma b k k is nothing but k p minus k a already I have uh, since uh, last 2 3 uh, lecture I am using difference of uh, k p and k a as k without any uh, suffix. So, this is actually you can say this portion at this point intensity of pressure will be gamma b times k multiplied d naught you can see that that d naught from here actually. So, so how it is there I have shown here if this diagram if I continue as considering active then here actually could have been intensity could have been this one and from here if I consider uh, only passive then this could have been uh, this one this plus this okay, the entire this portion okay. and because of that. Uh, so, now if I want to find out only this one. So, this one will become a gamma b k p minus k a d naught or gamma b multiplied by k multiplied by d naught. So, this is the pressure diagram. Now, using this pressure diagram I have to 
now analyze considering uh, uh, equilibrium and first I have to find out at what depth it will become 0, why not. Then I have to find out uh, different other quantities and then uh, from uh, um, finally, I have to find out d naught and then at the end I have to find out t in the anchor rod. So, if I go to the next slide and you can see that uh, analysis procedure also there are two methods of analysis. One actually based on comp, uh, equilibrium of this based on this diagram we consider the equilibrium and then find out d naught and this d naught can be increased by something like uh, 20 to 30 or 40 percent to uh, provide some factor of safety that is one approach and another approach actually this side diagram in the k p itself I will um, introduce one factor of safety 2 or 2.5 then this pressure diagram will become smaller or reduced and taking that finally, you can find out d naught that is another approach, but out of these two approach I will uh, consider only this approach that means whatever diagram I have got this diagram I will consider the equilibrium and based on that whatever d naught I will get d naught plus y naught will be the d required and then I will increase by 20 to 30 percent or even 40 percent to provide your factor of safety. Now, actually you can see step by step this is the thing already we have done before also what will be the y, a, y naught, y naught actually will be uh, p a bar divided by gamma b k a and p a bar is nothing but p 1 bar plus gamma b uh, gamma b h 2 uh, k and divided by k, k, uh, gamma b k means k, k p minus k a. So, this y naught can be obtained. So, this is the point of 0 pressure from dredge line that means y naught is what point of 0 pressure from dredge, dredge line this distance y naught this is the equation and how we have got uh, that is the that pressure should be equate uh, passive pressure and active pressure and that become then that then only it will become 0. So, that from there actually this is done before. So, I am not showing that only directly equation I am reading here and for equilibrium sum of moments at any point equal to 0 is it not. So, that taking moment about anchor point that means there will be one force this will be another force and the three forces are there. If I take any other moment then there will be two unknowns. Okay. So, because of that what I will do uh, I will take moment with respect to this then t will not come. So, to avoid that actually always you have to take the moment with respect to this. So, then p p there will be p p is acting here it is acting from d naught by 3 from the base. So, that is actually uh, and see if I want to take uh, anchor rod then if I know this and then if I know this distance I can find out h 4 also. So, all dimension are known this is known. So, from here what is the distance to up to anchor rod I can find out. So, p p multiplied by h draw h 4 this is giving moment in this direction and p a into this is the p a this entire diagram the acting p a is acting here this is giving this direction counter. So, that means they must be equal to so, p a multiplied by y a bar y a bar is what actually this is the point of application of p a and this is the distance from the anchor rod to this point of application. So, that to be equated now p p will be equal to area of this diagram half gamma b k d square uh, actually it will be uh, d naught d naught square and h 4 actually you can see h 4 you can find out h 3 that means this is the one h 3 plus h naught h 3 plus h naught uh, h 3 plus h naught is shown here or it may be y naught h 3 plus h naught is not there this is y naught must be h 3 plus y naught plus 2 by 3 d naught that means 2 by 3 this is up this is 2 by 3 d naught. So, then it you are getting h 3 means this one h 3 means h uh, 3 means this one plus this uh, plus uh, uh, y naught that means this one plus 2 third of d naught this one. So, that become h 4 you can see from here to here that is the shown. So, here actually correction it must be y naught not h naught. So, next one you can see now uh, 
now p a y a bar p a y a bar uh, y a bar is this equal to. So, that means p a y bar equal to half, half gamma b k d naught square plus h 3. So, this is written correctly here h 3 y naught plus 2 by 3 d naught and then this one if we simplify this one if I simplify then it will reduce to a equation c 1 d naught cube plus c 2 d naught square plus c 3 equal to 0. So, that means, not I have not done anything extra what I have tried to express the area of this and I have multiplied by h 4 and I have find out the area of this multiplied by y a and then I have equated I simply equated and then simplified. And if I simplify then finally, I can express d cube d square and uh, d, d 0 uh, with some coefficient c 1, c 2 and c 3 and then I can get a cubic equation and this cubic equation c 1 is actually from this uh, uh, when you will expand this one and simplify then you will see that c 1 become gamma b k by 3 and c 2 become gamma b k by 2 plus uh, into h 3 plus y naught and c 3 become minus p a y bar y a bar. Okay. So, these are the things c 1, c 2, c 3 uh, you either you can do this way or you can directly you take this equation express y a also in terms of that and then simplify then directly I will get a equation in this form or if I know the all dimension I can take this equation first and then I can calculate c 1 by this c 2 by this and c 3 by this then I will put there and then I can solve that cubic equation. Now, out uh, uh, in this there are some more things are there that is gamma b I have used con con uh, constantly that gamma b is nothing but summers uh, unit weight of soil and which is nothing but gamma total minus gamma w gamma submerge equal to gamma total minus gamma w and k I have taken every so everywhere which is nothing but k p minus k. Okay. So, this is the one then I have got the equation from where actually what I can get d naught d naught only from here from 0 pressure to the bottom of the pile. So, that is d naught, but still we have not got actual depth of embedment. So, to get that one what you have to do you can see um, that your d will be equal to d will be equal to this should have been uh, this should have come before d equal to d naught plus y naught because d naught plus y naught is d and uh, and then uh, after getting that uh, getting this then uh, here actually p p is in terms of d naught here actually. Uh, so, now I can find out once d naught is known I will get actual value of this and here all dimension known I will get actual value of this. So, difference of these two p a minus p p will nothing but tension in the uh, a, a tension in the uh, uh, tie rod. Okay. So, this way we can find out force in the rod. So, this is done and then the last part actually that finding out the bending moment in the in the in the in the sheet pile wall. Then what we can do here uh, you can see that uh, you know that uh, where uh, in a particular beam if you consider a loaded beam where we get the maximum bending moment actually the point where your shear force is 0 there actually you get the bending moment maximum. So, there actually here actually if I consider this is beam actually and then this direction is force then uh, the lateral force is nothing but the shear force here and if that is the concept I use then I will try to find out the point where actually lateral force is 0. If I can find out that point actually your bending moment become maximum okay. that is the concept actually see the maximum theoretical moment in this case may be at a point c that is c uh, any depth h m that is h m from the bar, uh, top below the ground level which lies between h 1 and h h 1 actually here uh, h 1 here and h is here. So, between h 1 and h where the shear is 0 shear means lateral force here the depth h m may be determined from the equation given below. So, how I have got the equation actually I have tried to uh, uh, get the uh, 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 considering H m I have uh, equated the uh, force here you can see half I have got the area of this smaller triangle half p 1 bar into H 1 that is one part. Then 
there will be a trapezoidal part and before trapezoidal part this force is this direction and T f force in other direction. So, it will be minus plus this is trapezoidal part uh, or a rectangle part I can say this is the rectangle part. So, P 1 multiplied by H m minus H 1 H m H m minus uh, H 1 H 1 is this one. So, H m minus H 1 become this depth this depth. So, this depth multiplied by P 1 bar we are taking the rectangular area this this rectangular part this part and then this triangular part will be half uh, gamma B H m minus H 1 square K A. So, pressure will be uh, uh, so uh, that means, this pressure actually I have told you that gamma B multiplied by uh, H m minus H 1 uh, multiplied by K A this is the pressure. So, if I want to find out the force then I have to multiply it by half multiplied by this multiplied by this uh, uh, multiplied by uh, this multiplied by H m minus H 1. So, if I do this one so H m minus H 1 becomes square and there is a K this K A is there gamma B is there and half is there. So, that means now, uh, uh, up to this uh, once again if I clean I will just clean and show you once again that means, what I have to do I have to take force up to this. So, I will be getting uh, I will draw a vertical line. So, this is a triangular part this is the tension part 1 this is 2 and this is my and this is this rectangular part 3. So, this is 3 this is 2 this is 1 and this is actually 4 this portion this this triangle is the 4. So, this is also 4. So, 4 part if I do and their direction is known all are these are all actually this direction, but only T A is in this direction. So, based on that already T A is known. So, if I put 0 from here actually only unknown is H m. So, once you know the H m from this equation I can find out the bending moment at this point what is that will be the maximum bending moment in the sheet pile wall and that will be sometime useful for design purpose. Now, I will go to next slide. So, this is the one as I have told you that similar to uh, your uh, cantilever sheet pile wall even bulkhead also it can be of combination of uh, above dredge level suppose sand above dredge level sand and below dredge level actually your clay. Then corresponding pressure diagram is like that if this pressure diagram become like this then your problem actually uh, again it becomes simpler actually, but I have not done this, uh, but if, if you want you can do it same same way can be done. So, we can find out uh, equilibrium this pressure diagram and this pressure diagram and plus this should be equal to 0 and from there I will get K A actually or sometime I can find out if I know this dimension I require first I can find out what is the D required. Once you know the D required then from there actually I will get the unknown quantity here that become known this become known. So, difference of these two will become T A and similarly I can find out uh, depth of bending moment uh, maximum bending moment and maximum bending moment what is the maximum moment also. So, I have not done this it is actually simpler than the what I have shown, uh, but I want you one can the pressure diagram I have shown, but other thing you can if you wish you can complete it uh, by your own. So, uh, that means, this is actually your uh, this is actually your uh, 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 sand above dredge level that means, sheet pile was retaining sand and it is penetrated on the clay layer then corresponding pressure diagram is there if this two pressure graph, no, diagram is, is known and if you know how we have done actually calculation similar way if you follow you will be able to do what is the depth of embedment required what is T what is uh, depth of maximum bending moment all those things can be similar way can be done. Okay. With this I will stop here thank you.